Hi there. You know, a lot of times people post on YouTube and they say, this is beginner or easy flowers or easy trees, but they're really not beginner. They're kind of assuming you know a little bit first. So I want to talk to you if you are a true beginner, you have not painted, or you tiny little bit dappled. And I want to show you some things to get you started and paint a few flowers. Deal? So the first thing I want to talk to you about is to have a few colors, a few basic colors. What I tell my students is to have them have about 12 of them and I have lists of colors and I won't be able to think of all of them off the top of my head, but I'm going to tell you what the main ones are. Now, if you want a whole list, I actually put it in another one of these tutorials on YouTube. So look it up and you can see it in writing. But alizarin crimson, sap green. What else? I would say you want yellow ochre, Payne's gray. You want a uh, burnt umber. You want cadmium yellow and lemon yellow. And you want some blues like ultramarine blue to start. So uh, if you want, you can pause it and write those down, or you can go and look at my other beginner section. I also have a Patreon site, and I have over a dozen tutorials that will take you from the very beginning, and I really mean brand new beginning, or if you're someone who hasn't painted in a while, and maybe you want to refresh all your memories. It's been years. That's a good back to basics. Or if you just want to keep it simple, then that's good too. It's patreon.com slash Syndra. And it's only $8 for the starting out tier. And you, they're all taped. All the little classes are taped. And I pride myself in really being helpful. I don't hold anything back and keep it just for my little secret tricks. Uh, why do teachers do that? I don't know. Um, I, I try to clearly share because I want you to find the joy and fun with painting. So look it up, see what you think. That's the $8 tier. It's for a whole month. And if you want to stay and just keep it up for another month or even longer, I keep adding. I add at least four new tutorials every month. Lots of times even more. But let's just say you only do it for one month for $8. Why not, right? Okay. So that is... That's kind of like a goal of mine is to just really create happy painting people. <laughs> so after you get those colors, and I'm going to suggest that you get tubes, okay? And here's what tubes look like. And you can get them um, in 15 mLs or 8 mLs. And I would suggest that you do the 15 if you can, because they're hardly any more money and there's so much more in the tube and it will last you a while. Now, what do you do when you get these tubes in the basic colors I went through? And you can even do less than that just to try it out. Get three colors to try it out. So you're going to make a palette. And a palette is simply where you put all your colors. So let me go through those with you too. So with a palette, I'm going to go and show you a couple of mine. This one's kind of a fancy one. This is one of my newer palettes. It's handmade ceramic. Isn't it pretty? And it has, you call these wells, and it has two, four, six, eight, 10, 12, 14, 16 wells. And I'm calling this my flower palette because I put some of my favorite colors from various brands. And here's all the colors. What I do is I write them all out. Is that my eyes or is, it a, is this camera a little blurry? I wonder why. Maybe it'll straighten out. Anyway, I put the color and then I'm going to put it. And some of these colors are unusual. But for example, sap green, 
is one that you want to get. Cadmium yellow is one you want to get. And what I do is I write the color on a piece of watercolor paper. And then I do part of my little sample. Um, part of it I do with hardly any water, so it's strong. And part of it I do with more water, so it's lighter. Because a lot of colors can look very different from their darkest part to their lightest part. So I want to see both of it on each of them, okay? So the, the paper that I suggest you start with is, for your very first paper, I would do Canson XL. And make sure you get cold pressed, 140 pounds. And nine by 12 is nice because you can make smaller pieces. You can cut them up. It's just in an easy pad that you can just pull off for each, each one. So as you get more involved in watercolor, you can get nicer paper, but this is a good one to start with to start fig figuring out what watercolor is all about. Oh, I can't talk what it's all about. How's that? I have lots and lots of paper and I still use this when I want to do samples, when I want to teach or try things, when I want to do a swatch. These are all called swatches, a swatch card. Um, I use it for lots of things. And this company is the same one that does Arches paper, which is considered a pretty gold standard for lots of professional artists. So that's what I would suggest. Then I would suggest that you get a palette, an empty palette. And this is one of my favorites. And in the description, I'll put some links. This is from Amazon. A lot of my supplies are from Amazon and you can get the same one in different colors. And I have a lot of these because I've been painting a long time, but you only need one. And this one's kind of cool because it gives you an extra section. It's stuck so I'm not, I'm not gonna break my nails getting it out for you. I'd probably put something under there to lift it. There you go. So that's pretty stuck heavy, I wonder why. Anyway, this one's clear. So you have this space. A lot of times it's fun to mix your colors or test them. So you have spaces. And by the way, I always leave my mixed colors out. I don't clean it. I just leave it sitting there. And that way, if I want that exact color that I mixed, I already have some. Watercolor, unlike acrylic or oils or lots of different types of, they call it mediums, pastels, lots of things. You use it, you put it on your palette. You know, those artists would have their little thumb sticking through and they'd have an easel and be painting away. Well, when that palette dries, you can't use those paints again. You have to squeeze out from your tube every time you paint. Acrylic's a little better if you cover it with things, but with watercolor, one of the nicest things is you can dry out your paint, dry it on any palette you use, and just take your brush and take a little moisture with your water, and you can just activate it again. You never waste it. So what I like to suggest to brand new beginners is that you fill in as many as you have. You can fill them in in a row or every other one, depending on how many you have. And then I suggest you get some kind of Sharpie and whatever you may have. I have a lot of Micron. I'm looking for my Sharpie right now. Here's a colored Sharpie and I wouldn't use that. I would use the black one. Anyway, you get your Sharpie or um, whatever you have. I'm trying to pretend I'm giving up because the note will show up. <laughs> So a this is a fine point. You can get extra fine medium. You want something waterproof that's permanent. And then I'll write the names next to every color. Now you might think, oh, of course I'll remember the names. Well, one thing that's a little odd with watercolor is that you don't always see what they look like when they're dry. So that's why it's nice to put a test 
And it's also nice to write the names. I always like, so I don't waste them. And I always know the consistency. I like to squirt a little bit from the tube, all the colors, just squirt it in, write out the name, leave it open and let it dry at least for a few hours. I usually do it the day before I'm going to paint if I'm making a new palette. You can also buy these little circles. And when I teach live classes, then I'll give them a little sheet with all the names that correspond with each of the numbers. But if you want and you see a little palette like this, you could fill that up and just leave it somewhere on your desk or whatever. If you can have a small little space to paint, that's yours and you can leave all your stuff all set up. That's the way to do it. Even if it's tiny, just a little something where all your special art supplies are. So after you get a palette, then I even write the name on it. And I don't know where I got this paint on my finger. <laughs> anyway, I, I write the name on it. And um, the brands I like are professional grade or something just a good quality. For example, uh, Windsor and Newton has a professional type of painting, but it's kind of expensive when you're just starting out. So their student brand is called Cotman. And let me tell you, they're better than most student brands and they're as good as many professionals. So I would consider Cotman or I like Daniel Smith as an overall brand. And then I have lots of brands that I enjoy. So when you get to the point where you like lots of brands, you can name your brand. And that's Mar Mary Blue. And look what I do. I have all the colors written down, dark, medium, and light. This is my Mary colors. This is my M. Grant, May Mary, and some Lucas. Again, I have a little piece of paper and I have all the colors, the dark, the medium and light in some of them and just the dark and light in others. This is core. It's pronounced core, but it's spelled like it would be cure or something, Q-O-R. And it's a lot of times on the back of things that I'm just playing with, I will put it. So there you go. And these have unusual colors other than sap, raw umber. Um, I have a Daniel Smith sepia in it. Most of these colors I like to call second tier. You don't buy them for your basics. You buy them as you get more and more into painting. Notice I mixed all my greens and I loved it. Because even if I don't use this for months, I can come back and reactivate it with a damp brush. This one's called Pour Introductory, and it's a really good set. If you want to get an idea of pour, I think I was sketching something on this one. And it's got a lot of beautiful colors that will take you a long way. And again, do you notice I mix some colors and I just let them set there. So, and this last one, did I show you this? This is a mix of different colors. M. Graham is real creamy and beautiful shades. And then I have a little bit of May Mary Blue and a little bit of Lucas. And Lucas is a fun color too. So I'm going to get all of these put away and let's paint a couple of flowers. Now, once you do everything, now you're ready to paint. And if you look at my shirt, I feel beautiful. That's pretty, isn't it? That comes with the top. I hope you feel beautiful inside and out today. And I hope you feel like making beauty with your paintings. Now let's talk about flowers a minute. A lot of times I'll see a napkin or something that I go, oh, those are watercolor flowers and I'll keep it to give me ideas. And sometimes I'll see in magazines, this one's for perfume, watercolor flowers. So whenever I don't know what I wanna paint, lots of times I'll paint flowers 
Here is Hello May. I saw this online. I put it on my Facebook and then I thought, hey, I want to paint those flowers. So I kept it for that. So let me just go through a few things. Once you have a few flowers that you enjoy, you can actually, I'm still a little blurry, but I'm going to go in close so you can see it. You can actually put them in a shape. All you do is draw any shape you want. And you can draw a heart or make a stencil and make it perfect. And put all your little flowers in it. And look how cute that is. Here are some big ones. And smaller. And medium. And any colors you want. And they would be pretty framed. They'd be pretty printed out. Made into cards. Here's some more flowers that I was just playing around with. And I have some daisies and a little rose uh, combination. Today, I'm going to teach you daisies. I'm going to teach you maybe roses. Roses, I'm going to definitely teach you field flowers. Roses are so easy, but they're a little tricky. So if we have time, I want this to be something you get as a brand new beginner. And this one's good for you, too. This one I drew with an ink pen and then I felt it in. And there you go. Now, as you get more advanced, you'll do more advanced things with flowers. And look how pretty these are for pansies and pansy designs. And you can do pansies on all kinds of colors and shapes and designs. Pansies, I wouldn't do today with you, but they're real easy and fun. I teach Zoom classes. If you ever want to take a live interactive Zoom class with me, just let me know. The next one I have is coming up on Sunday, and it's good for beginners or more advanced. And here's what I'm teaching. Doesn't have to look just like yours. Remember that flower I said I liked? I might want to paint it. There it is. <laughs> and there's this one. That's my watercolor version of it, I should say. I'm teaching this at 2 p.m. Eastern time of the United States. Wherever you are in this amazing world, if you want to take a live Zoom class with me or take the class when it is on tape, I tape every class. The cost is $11, um, whether you take the class live with the tape also, or just the tape. And I'm always here to help you and critique and suggest different things. You just send me a screenshot kind of picture with your cell phone and send it to me. And I can say, why don't you add more red here or whatever it would be. I'm also in my Patreon that I told you about. This is for more advanced also when you have a little bit more experience. And these look like cherry blossoms, but it's actually a type of magnolia. So let's get started and get a couple of flowers together. You want to? So first I'm gonna get a plain paper. Let's see if I have one handy. There we are. I'm gonna pull back. The three size brushes that I think you should have are four, eight, and 10 or 12. Now you could get two or four, six or eight, or 10, 12, 14. I've got all of those and I use all of those. But when you start, unless you have money to burn, why not carefully get the best brushes to try it all out? All right, so I'm gonna start with a 10. I probably use eight the very, very most, but I want to make it big enough for you to see. So the first flower we're going to do together is a tulip, okay? And I'm going to go to one of my pinks. And I'm going to get it kind of wet. I'm just going right in there. I'm making, there's a little puddle inside of the same area, the little well that has the paint also has a puddle list next to it. So I'm going to make a tulip over here. And there's one side. Do you see how I have the tip of my brush over here and I'm making it flat. 
Let me show you from the side. I'm making it flat. Do you see how my brush is flat, flat, flat? I wonder why my, all my cameras are acting silly today. So I do the point with the tip. It's trying to find it. Then I'm flat and then I lift up again. That's my first tulip leaf, petal, I should say. Now I'm gonna do the side one. And this is what it looks like straight. Now I'm gonna do the side one and I'm gonna do point, press down and lift all the way up, okay? Let me show you from front on. So the side is point, press down and come together. This side is point, press down and come together. And now I'm gonna do the middle one. First, I think I'm gonna make these a little thicker. So those are the two petals and I think I'm gonna combine them on the bottom. I'm using the tip of my brush to combine them. So that looks a little bit more like a tulip. Did you see what I did? I just made it a little wider and then I combined it. Now I'm gonna make the top one. And notice I'm not going in the water a lot. I'm not going in the paint a lot. A lot. I'm just using, um, these are silver black velvet. And if you can handle it, I would even get an eight in silver black velvet, which is very similar to this one. And then there's the world you can paint. I'm looking for my eight, here it is. So here's eight and here's 10, okay? They're pretty similar. Now I'm gonna go in the middle of the tulip, the brand spanking middle. Now you'll notice I'm kind of scrubbing it in a little bit just to get rid of any little water lines left over from the first streaks. Now, a lot of times when I'm teaching someone who's brand new, they see what they think is a flaw and they go, oh, let me fix that. Let me fix it. I should make this more perfectly round. I should take off this line. I should make this tip go better and not go in to look more like that. I should fix this area. Resist the urge. You can fix a little bit or tweak or make it a little nicer, but don't overly fix because you don't want it to look like a photograph. You want it to look like you painted it. It has a little artistic flair. It's perfectly imperfect, just like we are as people, right? So now I'm gonna do a little trick. I'm first, before I do my trick, I'm gonna do one more tulip in the same color. Point, press down, go to the side, point only, then press down and go to the middle. And now I'm just doing the middle section and I'm going to make the bottom kind of like a little curve, okay? So that, those are my two. I'm just fixing a little bit, but not a ton. All right, now I'm going back to this one. You always need to have paper towel handy. I forgot to say that before, so now's a good time to tell you. Here's what you can do with paper towel. If that's too dark for me or I don't like it, I can put the paper towel down and press down. Don't wanna rub it, I'm just blotting it. And then I can lift it up and look at what happened. It got light. Now it also has some of the paper towel pattern. And honestly, sometimes that's what we want. In this case, it isn't. So I'm going in my water, rinsing, tap off extra water and tap off even more. And now I'm gonna smooth out the, that texture of paper towel, but not all of it, cause I kinda like it, don't you? Kinda looks like petals. Another thing you can do is rinse, tap off extra and go to your paper towel and Wrap it around. You always want to be careful with your brush and keep the shape. So don't squish it flat, but wrap it around it. I'm blotting out all the extra and I'm keeping it a little damp. And watch what I'm going to do. I'm going to, this is called lifting. So I'm lifting up some of the paint and I'm going to do some more. I'm rinsing. 
I'm tapping off from on here and then I'm making it even drier. If you think of like a washcloth, if you think of wringing out a washcloth, that's kind of the idea. You still want it damp. You don't want a dry washcloth, but you want to be able to lift it up carefully. I'm going to do it one more time. This is my third time. And now if I want to add a little more color to it, I may, or I might just leave it. And now this one, I'm going to decide if I want to add color or take it away. I think I'm going to add a teeny bit more color to the center and do the opposite of what I did here. Over on the first one I did, the bigger one, I made this tulip petal lighter. Over here, I lifted it with a paper towel and blotted it, and I'm leaving this tulip darker. Now, if I want to, I can go in. I'll show you one of them done that way. If I want to do a couple more in the back carefully. You know, when you paint with watercolor, you don't want to, you know how I lifted and scrubbed it off the front a little bit, and you do it lightly. You don't want to overly do that when you're painting and something's just surface dry. It doesn't take long to dry, but I don't want to lose this line here. So I'm being gentle with it, okay? And I'm just kind of playing with it a little bit. Now I'm going to take my sap green, one of the main desert island must-have colors, and I'm going to tap it on the bottom. Tulips always have thick stalks. Do you know that? So I'm tapping this on the bottom, getting ready for the stalks. Also, tulips, their stalks that they're on that are thick, every flower has their own, but the tulip, I'm going to move it to where, sorry, I'm interrupting myself to point out that the green is kind of getting wet and blurring up. And I'm going to tap a little bit more in and let it happen naturally. When it blends out with the water, it's pretty cool. So I'm going to do the stock next. I'm going to stay with my 10, but truthfully, you probably want to be on an 8 for this. And also, you might want to um, be even smaller or use a flat brush. I told you about the three sizes and variations. One thing I didn't tell you is if you have a half inch flat brush, that comes in handy too. But for now, we're just gonna stick with one and I'm gonna get more sap green. Now I'm gonna turn my paper sideways and I'm just going to find what I consider flat. And I'm just going to tap it out. Tap, tap. Little short ones will make it flatter. Now, if you need to, you could take a ruler or anything flat and go in there and first pencil in it in. Um, and then you'll be all set and make sure it's, it's flat. With me, I don't care if it's not perfect because I like it looking a little handmade. I'm turning it over, getting more. How much water to use, how much paint, that really goes through just doing it. So I'm doing it a little darker on one side, just to kind of be cool, which I am. And there we go. There are two stalks. Now, I don't know if you know this, but um, depending on where you live and depending what you know about tulips, this one, by the way, has some in the back. This doesn't. They're both cute, right? Tulips have big stalks. So I'm going to make the same thing I did with the petal I'm going to do with the stalk. Okay? So I'm going to start with the point, and then I'm going to drag it all the way down. Hello. And if I need to tap in a little extra color with the tip, I can do that. And if I want to just leave it a little lighter on one side, I can do that. And if I want to do a few more stalks, just for fun, I may do that too. What I like to do when I'm doing things like stalks is I like to put my wrist 
on the table, just like that. And then just kind of flick it back and forth, just like this. This is the sideways view. And you could even do a couple little grassy stalks too, if you wanted. Just like it's in the middle of a field or something. If you want, it's yours. You can do what you want. So there are the first two flowers. And I don't like this look down here. So I'm just looking at it. You know, it's all about taste. It's like, what do I think about that? So I'm gonna just make a little bit more grass and soften the, the bottom of the look. And there you go. There's a little group of tulips. Now, wouldn't this be pretty if you turn this into a card? Mother's Day is coming up if you celebrate that. You could cut this out and you could glue it on top of a card you buy somewhere else or just bend it over and write on the inside of it. Or for those of you that have access to printers someplace, either at your home or somebody's office, or you've got a UPS printer, or even online Vistaprint, you can send a picture with your cell phone of this. Make sure you sign it. I'd probably crop it right here. Probably, I'm not sure. Like, I'd probably crop it like this. And make sure you sign it. You could either put your initials. You could put your first initial and your last name. I usually put just Sindra because it's an unusual name. And um, a lot of times I put the year next to it. I'll say Sindra 23 right now if I want to. In fact, I think I will do it because I like my little tulips. So a lot of times I'll put it right here. And other times I might even do it up that. I'll probably just put it here now. You notice I'm using a mechanical pencil. Any pencil will do. Pencil and watercolor go real well together. So this one, I'm going to do 23, like a little line, 23 under it so it doesn't go so far in case I trim it more. So those are my tulips. If you need to, just practice a few more. Usually tulips have larger. See how large this whole petal is next to it? I think I would do larger ones, maybe one up to there if I did it again, or I might do one more later, but that's an idea for you. And there's your first flower. Now I'm gonna teach you two more flowers. You ready? The first one I wanna teach you is my world famous dot flower. I'm gonna go to my eight, pick any color you want, so I'm going to pick, oh, let me pick an orange. This is a Cotman orange. It's called Cadmium Orange, made by Cotman. That's the company I told you about. And I'm gonna do it right here. I'm glad my camera settled down. I'm gonna make one, two, kind of like a Mickey Mouse face, three dots. I'm gonna rinse my brush. Tap off the extra on a paper towel after tapping on here. And then I'm gonna take water and I'm going to, it doesn't have to be clean as a whistle, pure water, clear. This one looks, has a little orange left in and that's fine. I'm gonna make a triangle kind of petal. And then I'm gonna to touch the orange and let the orange flow into it. See how it's making like kind of cool petal marks all by itself. And I want that, I might touch it one more time a little bit. I want to leave that one alone. The water is pulling it in. I'm gonna leave it alone and let it do its thing. Now I'm gonna turn it. I'm gonna get some more clear water or almost clear. I'm gonna face the center. Notice I don't touch the orange first. First, I touch the petal part, just the petal. Now, if I touch the other petal, that's okay if it blends out a little bit, but I'm trying not to. I'm trying to just let it be. Sometimes I touch the center a little bit so that I don't leave a little ring of my little first dot. 
So there's the second one. Now, some of you are tempted to go smooth it out, make it perfect. No, 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 don't do it. Resist the urge. You want the imperfections. That's what makes it beautiful. So I'm doing one more. I have to move it in the frame. There you go. I'm doing one more. This one's shorter. I've discovered that if you make a couple of your petals of a flower a little shorter, it looks more real. It looks like it's kind of turned. Now, this one I scrubbed a little bit because I should have showed you. Sorry, I started doing it without thinking. I scrubbed in there because, again, I don't want that circle, the first circle. I'll try to show you next time. All right, now I'm going to use, what do I want to use? Now I'm going to use the same color as the other one. So it's kind of like a cadmium red. I mixed it up a little bit. Um, but any colors you use will be perfect. Yellow ochre would be pretty. See what I'm doing? Now I'm doing two more. I might even do two here. Hmm. Might be too late now to do it cleanly. And since I want to show you, I don't want to get it complicated. I'm going to start the next one with three also, or maybe I'll even do four. All right. So now I'm rinsing. Rinse, rinse. Tap off extra. Can you see that? Rinse, rinse. Tap off extra. My water is getting a little dirty. See that on top of the white? It's okay. And now I'm going to work on these two first. So I always face the center. I don't do it um, next to this. I do it facing the center. So I'm doing a thicker one to cover that space. And I tapped and there it is. And now I'm going to do it on this side. Rinse. Remember the rule. Don't touch that little uh, circle. Resist. Everybody always likes to touch it. So only do the water and then let the water pull it in. And even now, I'm not pulling it in. I'm letting the water do it. Now, if you need to, sometimes I'll even go like this and let the gravity kind of help a little bit. But sometimes I just leave it alone. Now I'm going to do all of these. And once you figure out how to do them, You'd be surprised how many you can do fairly quickly. I don't want it a perfect uh, triangle, but I want the basic shape. This time I didn't even rinse. And by the way, do you notice I'm flat? I'm gonna go, I'm gonna do it sideways, just like this. See how flat I am? I did the circle pointed. Now I'm flat with my brush. These brushes are called round brushes, okay? That means the base of where the, the brush is um, goes into the barrel of your handle round. And it's, you want one that has a tip that you can do cool things with. So one more, I'm tapping the water first. And do you notice that little circle there still stayed a circle? So that's what I'm going to just do very lightly to soften it. I kind of scrub it out and soften it. Okay. So this one has four. Now it looks a little bit like a pinwheel, but I think we'll be okay. I don't think I'm going to add any more to this. And this one has five. Most flowers I do, I try to, most things I do, I try to paint uneven, like three, five, seven. Um, just because our brains, the rule of three is our brains like that. Now, these two are not done. One thing kind of fun with watercolor is to go back and do a new layer when it started to dry. So we're going to leave these alone and we're going to do daisies, beautiful daisies. So with daisies, I'm gonna do cadmium yellow with some of them. With daisies, I'm just doing, I hope you can see that, I think you can. I'm doing skinny, same thing I did over here, but very skinny. Same thing I did here, point, flat, released. And I'm gonna do two 
daisies. See how I'm just knocking them out? Do you see how they're so light? You can hardly see them. And that's okay too. So there's one daisy. I'm going to have it face that way. Now I'm getting a little bit more cadmium yellow. And then this one, which has a lot more, I'm going to soften it because it's almost too, I might even do this. It's almost too strong for what I want. I wanted it kind of a dainty, dainty little daisy. This one, I'm just going around, making little pretty leaves. Now I'm going to go in my yellow ochre. And I'm going to touch just a little bit on one side of some of these daisy leaves. I don't want it to look like an outline. I just want to get more texture, okay? And I have a little messy blotch because I'm a messy girl when I paint. Let's be honest. Know thyself. I'm going to smooth that out. Okay. I'm going to get yellow ochre. And again, not very strong, just pretty little yellow ochres on there. And I'm going to do one more. Every one I've been doing is two. And remember I said use the rule of uneven. That's really what I should have done with each. So I'll do one more to prove what I need. This is what it looks like partway done with two. Now I'm going to do one more very light, very watery cadmium. I want it lighter, so I'm going to get a little more water. I don't mind if a couple leaves are darker, but in general, I want it just kind of delicate. Now, certain daisies, you can go on and on and on and do layers on top so you don't see individual petals. But for this, I'm just going to leave the petals where you can kind of see them. Okay. All right. Now, let's go back to this. If I'm going too fast, just pause and catch up and then come back. Deal? Okay. So for this one, I'm going to go to Payne's Gray, one of my top colors. I'm dipping my number eight into the Payne's Gray. And I'm going to tap like a little oblong, oblong circle and make the stem in the center of the flower. Just like that, see? And I can do the center if I want, or I can leave it white, whatever I'm in the mood for. And I'm gonna try not to touch things that might be still wet. So the next one I'm gonna do with turning my paper upside down. You know, I love to paint turning my paper upside down lots of times, because it lets me see what it really looks like instead of what I kind of think it might look like. So there's my two flowers and I am done. I'm looking for some flowers I've done already to give you an idea of what those look like. And too bad I didn't put any close by. Let me look over here. Yeah, I found a couple, hold on. All right, so here's a purple one, just like I did with you. And here's a light violet one, just like I did with you. Now with both of these, I even did them lighter than we did in different colors. And then I added little stems, little delicate stems to them, but I still kept them very artsy. Do you see that? And I love that pattern. So what I like to do with these kind of stems is I like to maybe even go to the st smaller brush, like this one's a six, that would be fine. I'm going to sap green again, and I'm going to go down from the center. And do you see that I'm doing real short little thin ones this time? And maybe we'll have them leaning towards each other. And after I do the little thin ones, one little trick you can do is make a little check mark. Check, check, check. And those little check marks, I think, give a cute little look. Check, 
my brush is starting to dry out, but I'm not putting more water because sometimes I like that look too. Do you see how I did check marks with this one? I like that. All right, and those are pretty much done. Now I'm gonna finish the daisy. And I think I'll do, I'm kind of thinking I'm gonna stick with black. Payne's gray is almost black and I like that. And I'm gonna do similar of this, but make it look more like a dome. So little strokes looking like a dome. See that? And then I'm gonna go in and tap the center. Now you could do brown, you could do orange, you could do tan, whatever you're in the mood for works. You could do pretend flowers, real looking ones. I'm doing this kind of like a black eyed, black eyed Daisy, black eyed Susan, we used to call them growing up, if you know what I mean. So that's why I thought it'd be fun to be dark. Now, what if I wanted to make it a little bit more brownish, orangey black? Well, I'm gonna go to Burnt Sienna and I'm just gonna tap on top just to kind of soften the look. I can wait for it to be drier or I could just do a little bit now and blend it in. It's up to me, right? It's up to you too. And I might even do that right here just to kind of soften that look. I think that looks pretty right now. So there you go. And with the daisies, I'm gonna do sap green and I'm dragging my whole hand down. Do you see that? I'm going where I think it would be and I'm dragging the whole wrist with it. The whole wrist with it. So instead of floating your arm and painting where it's flopping around, and with watercolor, we don't use easels. We just simply have the paper flat or at a slight angle, and then we rest this on there. So I'm going to go a couple little quick and easy little flicks. And I'm gonna get a tiny little bit more. And I'm gonna do this skinny flat, skinny flat. I'm gonna do that with this tiny leaf. And sometimes I like to leave them um, just one side only. And sometimes I like to do both. This one feels like it needs two coming out of it. That one's one little tip with your leaves, whatever leaves you make, is to do it in the same direction of the stem that you're working from. So don't put the leaf like this or it will look broken. Put it like this, right? And feel free to turn your paper. This one goes in this direction. And just like everything else, we let it be artsy and we don't make it perfect. So there, I think we're gonna stop today. There are three types of flowers for you to play with. Wouldn't this be pretty on a little card by itself? Wouldn't this be pretty on a little card? And you could cut them all out or you could put them in some kind of arrangement. And again, if you want to see how more flowers are made or how to put them in arrangements, think about coming to my live um, watercolor flowers class, which is this coming Sunday. And it's at two o'clock in the afternoon. It lasts 90 minutes. That's an hour and a half. And it's from two until 3.30 Eastern Standard Time in the United States. But if you can't come live, you can also come instead to the um, playback of it, the tape of it. Also, I have a beginner Patreon that you will be amazed. You think I'm kidding? I'm not kidding. You'll be amazed how well you'll be painting. If you just sign up for one month, you can cancel at any time. Just $8 for the month. And boom, you will have so much information. I think you'll be fairly amazed at yourself. What can I tell you? There's more flowers I'd love to teach you. 
And flowers are just beautiful and fun and lively. And there's just so many that you can do for so many different reasons. And I just hope you stick with me and see some more because I just think they're so peaceful and fun and lovely. So thanks for joining me. Do me a favor and like this um, just to get the visibility so other people can see it too. And would you also subscribe to this channel? Once you subscribe, there's a bell. And if you click the bell, that's even better. So you do subscribe and then the bell. All that means is it'll notify you. When you come on YouTube, you'll have a little section which will tell you who's got new little videos or tutorials, okay? I sure hope you had fun. I always have fun when I paint. And I hope you do too. Take care. Bye-bye. God bless your day. Hope to see you again.